interview with Kenny Joker and my friend Noah um, is going to be helping out and it's gonna be a really good interview. Sorry you cannot see me in this video. I got told to not mess about with these things, but I did. Um, Hi Kenny, my name is Noah and I'm Brody's friend. I am a huge St. Johnson fan. You are a Saints legend, but having played for both Saints and Livingston, who did you support during the Better Fred Cup final this year? Well, I mean, the obvious answer is uh, St. Johnston. I think, um, obviously, St. Johnston, I, I was there on two occasions and had a, an absolutely brilliant time uh, playing for St. Johnston, particularly uh, in the Premier League and also the run to the, the Challenge Cup uh, and playing in the, the Challenge Cup final, which was um, a, a massive personal achievement and great to be involved in a team that you actually get to, to win, a, win a trophy. And uh, I believe that, albeit it was overshadowed by St Johnston's Scottish Cup success and also the recent League Cup uh, victory, I think it was one of St Johnston's first uh, National Cup wins uh, back in 2007. So I was really chuffed with that and I got man of the match in the final. Um, being a doctor during your football career, did you get recognised working in the hospital? Uh, yes, um, on a few occasions because where I, where I worked when I was, I had transitioned from playing with St Johnston full time and I signed with Falkirk part time and I was working in the, the local hospital uh, in Stirling, which covers the Falkirk area as well. And one, one funny story was that uh, I was working in A&E &E and there was this wee boy, a fan much like yourself, and he had, I wasn't treating him, but he um, saw me walking about in the department and he asked the doctor that was looking after him if he could have his picture taken with me. So he, obviously I agreed, we had our pictures taken and then I got home from work a few hours later and I had a friend request from the wee boy on Facebook um, and his profile picture was me and him in the A&E department. <laughs> um, how did you break your legs during your time at Falkirk and did you, how did you find the motivation to play again afterwards? Oh, that's, that's a difficult one. I, I, uh, so what happened was I was playing on loan with a team called Camelon Juniors and the manager at Falkirk had said, you need, to, you need to be a bit more aggressive uh, if, if you want to uh, make it in, in, into the, the first team at Falkirk. So I knew that the assistant manager was there watching me at this particular game and that it was in the Scottish Cup with, uh, with Camelon. And I went for a ball with the goalkeeper that I probably shouldn't have gone for in hindsight and I uh, came off uh, the worst from it. And that was me out for the the rest of the season. I came back for pre-season the following season and unfortunately in the second game back I uh, I kicked one of my future teammates, a guy called Michael Hall, actually kicked his foot I am right in the same place on my leg and the bone broke again um, so I had to get an operation that time and I think I was probably thinking about giving up football. Obviously, I'm glad I didn't. But my, my dad had a long conversation with the uh, manager at Falkirk and basically asking if he thought that it was worth me really uh, knuckling down and trying my best to come back from it. And uh, the manager was very positive. So that gave me a, a boost that, you know, he had seen some potential in me and it, it was worth putting every effort and to get to get back again and obviously I'm, I'm glad I did uh, in the end but it probably did help me a wee bit um, 
because I was at university at the time and I could concentrate a bit on my studies um, while trying to rehab from the, the broken leg and uh, it, it probably helped studies. So every club. Um, what's the goal you're most proud of? Oh, I think I've got two. Um, the, um, the, the first one I'll mention was the the third goal in the uh, St Johnston uh, Cup final victory in the Challenge Cup final victory um, where, um, I don't know if you've seen it online, you'll be maybe too young to, uh, <laughs> to know about the game, but you might have seen the uh, highlights of the game. So I was quite proud of the turn and then the, the shot in the bottom corner and the defender who was defending me that day is a, a player who has went on to play in the English Premiership. So uh, quite proud of that one. But for timing and uh, what I meant to the supporters, my favourite goal of all time was when I was playing with uh, Brody's dad uh, with East Fife. And I scored in the last, uh, the last minute, in the last game of the season to um, avoid disappointment and to secure um, promotion for East Fife. So that's always one that will uh, will live live with me forever. Um, have you kept all your different football strips? Um, yeah, well, that would have been a good thing. I could have showed you some of some of my collection. I've I've got um, I've got a lot of strips that I swapped. I uh, I think I have a strip from Christoph Berra, David Weir, Stephen McManus. Um, Magic Bugera. I acquired an Alan Button strip, I think, at one time, and a, a Stephen Whitaker strip, and another time uh, to give to some of my friends. And I've got some of my old strips. So I've got, I've got St Johnston. I've got the St Johnston strip that I wore in the uh, Challenge Cup final. I've got the East Fife strip that I wore in that final game of the season. I've got strips from Northampton Town. I even acquired a, a strip from a teammate who represented Canada internationally and he gave me one of his Canada tops. So the, the plans were always to get them framed and hung up in a, a man cave, but um, I'm, I'm 40 now and I've still not got around to it. So um, that, that's all on the list of, of things to do still. Um, who's your favourite all-time football player? Oh, <laughs> my wee boys uh, make fun of me for this one, but uh, my favourite football player of all time was, uh, or is, uh, Morris Malpass. Now, he might not be a player that you're familiar with, but he was a, a legend for uh, Dundee United. And I think he represented Scotland more than 50 times. Uh, he uh, pretty much spent his whole career with Dundee United, played in the UEFA Cup final with Dundee United, the European Cup semi-final. He, he was a fantastic left back, but could also play uh, in the holding role in, in midfield. Um, his timing with headers was particularly impressive and something that I really aspired to, and that probably helped me a lot in my uh, in my own career, uh, thinking about uh, timing, uh, which he was absolutely, although he wasn't the biggest, he was absolutely fantastic. So yeah, my, my kids are like, uh, who, who, who is he? They expect me to say things like Pele, Maradona, but no, growing up, I, I followed uh, Dundee United and he was, he was a hero of mine and I was lucky enough to be a mascot while he was the captain. Uh, and, it, and it was great with me, so uh, definitely Morris Malpass. Um, I love football. What advice or tips would you give me to pursue my football dream? Um, the, the best piece of advice I could give you is just to make sure that you are enjoying yourself. If you enjoy the process of improving, uh, I, I say that I take my wee boys uh, football team and I try to say to them, you know, nobody's perfect. We all need to make mistakes to learn from them. Don't get disappointed by mistakes. You'll learn from the mistakes. Um, it's, it's very important to have that positive attitude. The other thing I would say as well is to stick in at school. 
because you know I learned a lot from sticking in a school that I could take into the uh, onto the football pitch, and uh, I- I'm very glad that I had something to uh, to back me up. Uh, so very important to stick in at school um, and also make sure that you are enjoying yourself. Okay, I'm I'm done. Okay. So now we have my questions. Right. Well, I'm I'm a bit nervous about this, Brody, because I saw your interview with uh, Paul Laurie, and uh, he was under a uh, major pressure. I felt uh, with some of your your questions, you very quick witted. So. I have to admit that I am a, a little bit nervous. Okay. Would you rather be licked to death by a hundred puppies or a hundred stone puppies? A, a, hundred, a hundred puppies or a hundred stone puppy? Yeah. Oh. Well, the ultimate um, result is that I'm going to die. Um, so, I suppose the the puppies are uh, cuter than the hundred stone puppy of being uh, licked and crushed to death. So I think I would probably go with the hundred uh, puppies. Okay. You were playing golf. <laughs> you are playing golf. What's the best course you have ever played? Ooh, that is a difficult one. Can I throw the question back to you and say what's the best course that you've ever played while I have a wee think about it? Probably the course that I just played, the wee course by Alistair McKenzie in Blair Gowrie. In Blair Gowrie, right. I've never played that one, but would you recommend it, would you? Yeah. I would. Right. Well, you should I, check out my course review video. Your oh, I will, I will, I will. So, where would I find that? Uh, on my YouTube channel, and just type in um, Brody J Martin reviewing the little the wee course. I have played the Elsa course at Turnberry. I played Ooh. that. I played that a couple of That's times, but that. Was that was before Donald Trump uh, took over, and that was that was really good. The views are actually incredible. I have also had the fortune to play uh, St Andrews. However, I had an absolute nightmare of a performance on St Andrews, so <laughs> the experience maybe wasn't as fantastic as what it could have been albeit I did manage to break 100 with a score of 99. Ooh. Which is a bit embarrassing, but uh, yeah, so the old course and the Elsa course. Okay, was my dad the best bench warmer that you have ever played with? (laughs) Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, your dad was the best bench warmer I have ever met in my life. (laughs) But I would have to say he he was a good goalkeeper and he was an absolutely cracking teammate. Okay. Can you give a shout out to Daniel Young or Danny Young St. Johnston's fan and poor player. Danny Young. Well, yeah. Danny Young, if you are a yeah, St. Johnston Danny fan, Young or Daniel Young? Well, Daniel Young, if you are a St. Johnston fan and you happen to be watching this, a uh, big shout out to you. And if you are ever looking for a game of golf with an absolute amateur uh, of the game, but um, a former St. Johnson player, I would be very up for a, a round of golf with you, mate. Okay. 
Who do you recommend to be interviewed next? I'm not, maybe sticking with the St Johnston theme, maybe Stevie May would be a good um, a person to interview. He um, likes a game of golf, I believe, and obviously he was instrumental in the St Johnston Scottish Cup and League Cup victories. So much more of a St Johnston legend than I ever was. Okay, and that is the end of the video, not the end of the video, the end of the interview. Thank you very much for letting me interview you. I'm going to end that there. And thank, thank you, you all for joining in. I can't believe my dad's the best bench warmer. That was an amazing interview. How great was Noah in that video and Kenny Juker. They were both legends and awesome. European tour player Daniel Young is going to be the next interview. It's hopefully going to be a great interview like this one and it's just going to be a great interview overall. Make sure to subscribe with all notifications turned on and like the video if you liked it. Peace!